With people getting busier and science becoming more accessible, folks are inventing new ways every day to catch up with the pace of the fast-growing world. Such an instance of the modern implementation of science is on its way to run people from one edge to another in a matter of minutes. Introducing the Hyperloop. Welcome to TechSpot. Hyperloop is a fairly new means of high-speed ground transport, which is currently under development. It is designed for passenger and cargo transportation, with unusual speed capabilities expected to exceed all prevailing forms of rail transport by traveling at over 700 miles per hour in a floating pod, which runs inside giant low-pressure tubes either above or below the ground. If we compare the Hyperloop with the traditional rail, there are two significant differences. Firstly, the pods holding the passengers travel through tubes or tunnels from which most of the air has been eliminated in order to curtail friction, allowing the pods to travel at up to 750 miles per hour. Secondly, unlike trains or cars that use wheels to run, the Hyperloop will use the pods designed to float on air skis. It comprises of three primary components including a tube, which is a huge sealed, low-pressure system that can be built above or below ground. Second one is a pod that employs magnetic or aerodynamic levitation, along with electromagnetic or aerodynamic propulsion, to glide along a fixed guideway, inside of which the coach races in a controlled environment. And the third one is the terminal. Overcoming air resistance is one of the biggest uses of energy in high-speed travel. Airliners climb to high altitudes to travel through less dense air. In order to create a similar effect at ground level, Hyperloop encloses the capsules in a reduced pressure tube, effectively allowing the trains to travel at airplane speeds while still on the ground. The concept of utilizing low pressure vacuum tubes as part of a transport system goes a long way back to 1864 when the Crystal Palace Pneumatic Railway used air pressure to push a wagon uphill in Victorian South London. Identical systems using pneumatic tubes to send mail and packages between places have been used since the late 19th century and can still be seen in supermarkets and banks to move money. If you want to see a clear ancestor of the Hyperloop, check out the VAC train concept, formulated by Robert Godard early in the 20th century. Since then, Many similar concepts and theories have been proposed, though they didn't get much popularity or success. After all this while, it is the well-known entrepreneur Elon Musk, founder and CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, who really redefined the concept with his Hyperloop Alpha paper in August 2013, which set out how a modern Hyperloop system would work and how much it would cost. In his Hyperloop Alpha paper, Musk demonstrated the case for a route running between Los Angeles and San Francisco, which would be much more economical and rapid, racing at a maximum speed of 760 miles per hour. The 350-mile route could be traveled in 35 minutes. He also asserted that his Hyperloop could be safer, affordable, weatherproof, self-powering, and cause minimum disruption to people who live along the route. Now let's get into Musk's model of the Hyperloop. According to him, the pressure of the air inside the Hyperloop tube is to be about one-sixth the pressure of the atmosphere of Mars. This implies an operating pressure of about 100 pascals, decreasing the drag force of the air by 1,000 times comparative to sea level, and would be equivalent to flying above 150,000 feet. The Hyperloop capsules in Musk's model float above the ground on a set of 28 air-bearing skis while the other versions of the Hyperloop run on magnetic levitation rather than air skis to keep the passenger pods above the tracks. In Musk's model, it is the pod, not the tracks, that produces the air cushion in order to keep the tube as basic and reasonable as possible. After getting its initial velocity from an external linear electric motor, the pod would accelerate to high subsonic velocity and get a boost every 70 miles in between the journey. Under Musk's model, the Hyperloop would be powered by solar panels set atop the tube, which would enable the system to induce more energy than it requires to run. While this version of the capsule would carry 28 passengers, others plan to carry 40 plus some luggage. 
another version of the pods would also carry cargo. Supporters claim that Hyperloop is considerably better than high-speed rail because of its many benefits like lower cost and energy efficiency. Among the other things, the track doesn't need to provide the power to the pods, and as the pods can depart every few minutes, it acts more like a service on demand. It's also incredibly fast, faster than any traditional high-speed rail. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe. While one branch is praising the concept of Hyperloop, critics have warned that due to nausea-inducing acceleration, traveling in a tube might be an uncomfortable experience. Anyway, Virgin Hyperloop says that a journey via Hyperloop will feel about the same as riding in an elevator or a passenger plane. Capacity comes as another question. It's not clear whether Hyperloop can do a better job of moving a large number of people, like other mass transportation alternatives. Analysts also argue that a considerable number of pods will be required to attain the same number of passenger numbers as more conventional rail systems, which use much bigger carriages. These all are thoughts that come once Hyperloop is launched. But before that, there are many other obstacles to overcome, like constructing the tubes strong enough to withstand stresses of holding up and carrying high-speed pods, and finding energy and cost-efficient ways to keep them running at low pressure. But don't you think traveling in a concrete pipe in a windowless pod sounds a little boring as there won't be much to do or look at? Musk has a solution for that too, as his original vision said that beautiful landscape will be displayed in the cabin and each passenger will have access to their own personal entertainment system. After triggering mass curiosity and laying out groundwork for Hyperloop services, Musk initially said he was way too busy to create his own service. Despite saying so, it looks like Musk continues to be captivated by the idea of Hyperloop. Musk set up the Boring Company in 2016 with the aim of making it easier and faster to dig the tunnels under and in between cities in order to make Hyperloop projects more feasible. In April 2019, the company provided more details on its agendas for the Washington DC to Baltimore section. Elon basically aims to build a high-speed loop underground transportation system for transporting passengers in autonomous electric vehicles, achieving speed of up to 150 miles per hour. Musk recently said that he had received verbal approval for a New York to Philadelphia to Baltimore to Washington DC hyperloop, which would reduce the New York to Washington DC travel time to just 29 minutes. Still a lot of work needed to receive formal approval, but I'm optimistic that it will occur rapidly, he added. There are now a number of companies working hard to turn the concept into reality. Among them are Virgin Hyperloop One, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, Transpod, Arrivo, and few others. Each one is cultivating a slightly different set of technologies. But the basic idea behind the Hyperloop remains unchanged. It's still not clear where Hyperloops will actually be established, but a number of companies have sketched out routes in the US, Europe, and elsewhere. Potential routes include New York to Washington DC, Kansas City to St. Louis, Bratislava to Brno, Pune to Mumbai, and Vijayawada to Amaravati in India, and many more. The Hyperloops are already under construction. It can be expected that we will soon be able to travel through them. How soon? Probably by the second half of the decade. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.